All right, hello everyone. We are deep in the Northern California section right now. Uh, and really close to Oregon. We are in the town of Etna, California, which is kind of small, but it's an excellent town. Really recommend the stop. Uh, there were some rumors it was really hard to get a hitch. It actually took me and the guy I was with Midlayer less than 20 minutes to get a hitch. And where you can stay when you go to Etna. There's a lot of places. There's a city park. There's a motel Etna. But the place I really recommend, it's called Alderbrook Manor, and it's a bed and breakfast. But they also have a little outbuilding called the Hiker Hut, which is right over there. You can see it. There's a bed and breakfast. And also this whole area back here is open to camping. The guy that runs his name is Dave. He's really nice. Uh, for, I think, $25, you get a bed, shower, uh, laundry is $3 extra, but it's really nice. Today, we're going to come and update you. It's been a while since I had an update. It's been a little hectic since we've passed the halfway point. But today, to get my notes out, we're going to talk about California Section N, and that's Belden to Bernie Falls State Park. Okay, day 82, I woke up at Belden Town Resort. Uh, we wound up staying there because it was really hot. Belden Town Resort is really low. Getting in there is a really steep descent. So we got there, ate lunch, and then actually ate dinner and decided to stay in one of the rooms. Belden Town Resort is really small. Pretty much when you get to it, that's it, is a resort. You can hitch to a place called Caribou Crossings. We didn't wind up going there, but Belden Town Resort, they have restaurants. They have a restaurant, have a general store where you can get a few snacks. Don't really recommend resupplying there because the hike out of there is, you know, you're going right back out of that valley where the river is that you cross to go north after Belden Town. And after Beldingtown, it was day 83, which day 83 was kind of, it was a great bittersweet day because I got up after we camped, after we hacked out of Beldingtown Resort, and for lunch, we passed uh, pretty much one of the only mile markers on the PCT. I think so far the first half of the trail, there have been like three or four mile, actual mile, mark, mile markers that people didn't make with rocks. And this was the PCT midpoint. It's a little bit before Chester. It's literally a little cement monument that says PCT midpoint, and that's pretty much it. It's, and it was really great to get there and get the log. And after we ate lunch there, we went down to the town of Chester. Uh, it was pretty easy to get a ride into Chester. And Chester is it was a really nice trail town. We got there, and the first thing we did was go to, I think it's called Pine Shack Frosty. They have jumbo milkshakes, which is, they're like 32 ounces, and they have, it seemed like 20 flavors, and really, if you go to Chester, really recommend going there and getting one of those excellent milkshakes, and at Chester, the first night, we stayed at the Lutheran Church. It was kind of hectic, because I thought you could sleep inside the church place, and it was Saturday night, and everyone had settled down, and I was just like sleeping under a table. My plan was to wake up and get out you know five o'clock and be out early so I, you know i wouldn't wouldn't bother anyone that was coming into church but little did i know uh they cleaned the church really late saturday night it was about 10 p.m and the lady that organized hikers stay in there came in and a guy came in and they would clean from like 10 o'clock and you know they kicked everyone that was inside out and it was a little bit complicated because there were a few people sleeping on the porch you know with their sleeping pads and so that's what I did initially because there's no places to hammock out there and it started raining and there were no tarps or anything it was kind of like a little tailgate tent with a bunch of holes in it and so it was leaking and so we slept there got a little wet but everything worked out people at the church were really nice the next morning we got some coffee cake and we stayed in Chester on Sunday because we had to get some mail on Monday so we hit up I think it's called the copper kettle in Chester, we ate there several times. It was really good food. And the other good place that we ate in Chester was, they have a Chinese place there, and it's called Happy Garden. And it's not really in any gut hooks, but we looked it up on Google, and they basically tried to kill us with Chinese food. It wasn't a buffet, but the portions were huge. I think it was one of the first meals on the trail that I wasn't able to finish. If you're in Chester for your resupply or town stop, definitely go to the Happy Garden and get Chinese. Our second night in Chester, we stayed at, I have a little hotel there called the Antlers Motel. 
the guy that runs the Antlers Motel, he was really nice and the beds are really comfortable. That's a nice spot if you want to stay there. In Chester, it's pretty it's located pretty close to everything. And 85 was the day we went out of Chester and we went to a place called Boundary Creek, which is the border of Lassen National Forest. And there's a little special thing about Lassen National Forest is as of 2017, for like 20 miles, if you camp anywhere in there, it requires a bear canister. And at this point in the PCT, we've already turned our bear canisters in. We already did our bear canister time in the Sierras. It was about 300 miles. And any way you slice it, a bear can is heavy. And you, I mean, all that weight, even when you don't have any food in there, it's just inconvenient. And no through hiker is going to do that for a 20 mile stretch. So there were some other people that were also camped at Boundary Creek and they wanted to do a 24 hour challenge. I really wasn't into doing the 24 hour challenge, but I was going to hike as many miles as I could, made sure I get out of the 20 mile zone and not have to carry a bear can and still follow the rules. Yeah try to follow the rules and so my 24 hour challenge uh, quotation marks started at 5 30 and we went the area right after boundary creek going through lashon national forest is really it's not very hard grade but a little bit's overgrown you're walking over some volcanic rocks so it's kind of hard on your feet and we walked all i walked all day I ended up getting a daylight 40 40 miles before the sun went down and never done that before not even close on the at and it was kind of weird because we were going through bushes and stuff and I, we were seeing bear poop everywhere and so I was walking and it was about 9 30 and as you guys know in the summer the days are pretty long so it was right about uh, dusk the sun was going down you could still see I was walking along and I spooked a pretty big bear it was about I don't know 50 yards from me just running down the trail probably the biggest bear I've seen in person it was like a cinnamon color. We've seen a lot of cinnamon color bears and I'm not, not really sure why. But it was like 9.30 when I was literally starting. The, you know, I was into the 24 hour challenge since 5.30, so it was a little unnerving. I wound up turning my music on and like, you know, yelling every once in a while because when I was doing the 24 hour challenge, I had my little pen light and I didn't want the battery to run down. So I was alternating pen light and then the light on my cell phone because I have an external battery I can charge it. And it worked okay, but it wasn't really that great. But we, it was nice because the moon was out and you could see a little bit. But we went through a 24 hour challenge and we were, you know, I was doing good. The other, there was a guy behind me and there was a guy in front of me. And we got to about 11.30 or 12. And the guy in front of me decided that, you know, his, his leg was hurting a little bit. He didn't really want to go on. And this really wasn't that fun if I knew no one else was doing it. And so we decided to call it at about 12. Uh, he camped right, you know, he camped where he wanted to so his foot could, you know, heal up a little bit and I went down about two miles and wound up camping right beside the trail in my hammock and when the day was over, it was about 18 hours. I'd done about 55 miles, which is the most I've ever done in a day. It was really nice. You know, we could have pushed it on and tried to get to Bernie, which is where we were trying to go, but just went worth it. We called it. Uh, we got about five or six hours of sleep. We woke up. We walked the 11 miles to Bernie and got a ride into Bernie and that goes into the next day. And when we went into Bernie, uh, Bernie's really nice. They have a place called the Word of Life Church. I think it's a, it's a Methodist church and they allow hikers to stay in the gym and they actually have a coffee shop and Bernie is a really nice town. It's weird because it has two, it has Dollar General and a supermarket right beside of each other. So there's that, and also a place in Bernie called Ann's Country Kitchen. We ate there a few times. Breakfast was really good. The lunch wasn't really that great. So if you go there, I recommend getting the lunch. Stayed in Bernie. We stayed one night, and the next day we kind of hung around, you know, recovering. And then we decided to leave about lunch, uh, me and the guy I was with. And we hiked up to Bernie Falls State Park in the afternoon. And we stopped and got a little snack at their store. And then we went on, it's probably like five more miles. And we found a little spot to camp. That was off the trail a little bit. But that's going to, and then that pretty much wraps up section N from Belden to Bernie Falls State Park. 
it was 132 miles. Uh, that may seem a little short, but you have to factor in that we did 56 miles in one day. It was supposed to be a 24 hour challenge, but didn't quite make it. There was one person that did the 24 hour challenge and he wound up finishing, but he didn't, re he didn't get as many miles as I think he wanted because he wound up taking a nap pretty late at night and then waking up and hiking more. So we were, you know, we didn't really make 24, but we got 18. It's a really fun experience. I uh, don't regret it. And that's section in, and we'll talk to you guys next time.